Today we're looking at refraction and here's some examples in front of us. Here's a convex lens making the light bend inwards and here's a concave lens making the light bend outwards or make it refract and other objects can also be used like a prism. This is a lot more complicated, there's a lot going on here or this block of glass with the curve on it. These are all examples of refraction which is the light bending and changing direction and it can even be shown with a slab of glass English glass no less, if I can get into here and we can put that onto here and if we change this down to a single beam then what we can do is we can actually measure refraction so today we're going to find out why refraction occurs and we're going to measure it there we go so the ray of light goes straight through but when we put the block of glass down there the light changes direction the light refracts and bends and comes out in a different location and this is what we're going to look at explain and understand in today's lesson we've just seen refraction in the lab this is where the light hits a glass block or a prism or a lens and it changes direction so refraction is when light changes direction or it bends that's easy to see the next question is why does it do that and the answer is simple it's because the light slows down and as it slows down it changes direction but it doesn't slow down evenly it slows down more on one side than on the other and this uneven slowing process causes the light to bend we can see it with a kayak if someone's out kayaking and they're paddling in a straight line when they want to change direction they jab the paddle in the water when it goes on this side there's more drag the kayak's going slower on this side and it slews in that direction whether it goes left or right and you can see it with a tracked vehicle when a tracked vehicle's going along the brakes are applied to one side this slows the tracks and the vehicle will slew in that direction and we can even see it with skis if someone's skiing in a straight line they can hold their ski pole in the snow and this drag will cause them to change direction light does this with refraction the light slows unevenly and this uneven slowing process causes the light to bend or refract what's happening with refraction well this line here separates air from glass. The ray of light is coming in like this. And as it strikes the glass here, this side of the beam slows down. May only get that far. The other side of the beam is still in the air and it gets to here because it hasn't slowed down so much. And now our beam of light is moving in this direction. And originally it was moving in that direction. So, our beam of light has come in and it bends and it changes direction there due to the uneven slowing process. It slows down more on this side than on the other and that's refraction and that's what we're measuring today. The next thing is angles. We need to know how to measure angles and we need to know how to use one of these. So, let's run through this and we'll get the angles all sorted out. We need to use a protractor and we're going to measure these three angles. One, two and three. Okay, let's get our protractor. Here it is. And we need to place the bottom line of the protractor onto the red line at the base of the page here. And this intersection needs to be on that point there. Okay, so we need to line our protractor up with this point here. Here we go. The first angle is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, plus, we go to the outside scale and we add another 5, 50, 5. That's our first angle. The second angle is further around, and that one is just over 80. In fact, it's 81. That's 81 degrees. Now, the third angle, it's gone past the 90, right around here. We're still on the inside scale, though. So it's 120 plus, looking on the outside scale, another 5. This outside angle is 125. And that's how we use the protractor. Well, here we are showing refraction on a big scale. Objects change direction using different methods. 
We don't always need to use the steering wheel. As we saw with Jules and her kayak, she used the paddle. Here, in Bruce's vehicle, we can change direction by actually speeding up and slowing down the sides of the vehicle. These levers control the movement of the vehicle. And this is a similar idea to light. When the light's refracting, it slows down on one side and that causes the light to change direction. And it's the same here with Bruce's vehicle. When we want to change direction, we slow it down on one side. If you imagine the ray of light striking the glass now, and it slows down on that side, then once again, it changes direction. Before we measure refraction, let's take a quick look at it. And here we've got some nice cloudy water. And we can see the laser beam going through the water really clearly there, but we can't see it in the air. So we need to make the air stand out a bit. So we can use some of this stuff. Brilliant, this is. And uh, we spray a bit of that in there. And instantly, we can see the laser. <coughs> I smell great too. But there's our laser, and it shows up really nicely. A little bit of reflection off the surface, but there's the refraction. It hits the water, bang, it bends. We don't need to use that. We can use dust. So a little bit of dust, and there we go. All these dust particles and aerosol particles act like miniature moons, and they reflect the light so we can see the path of the laser beam. And there it goes once again into the water. The water's all cloudy, so we can see it really clearly. And there's refraction. Fantastic, eh? And we can use smoke. Similar thing. As you know, smoke's a colloid. So it's got solid particles in it. And we make a little bit of smoke. And once we get the smoke, we'll also see the laser beam as it travels through the smoke. Okay. <laughs> Oh, and that must be uh, the extras getting restless in the background. Settle down, you extras, settle down. And there we have refraction, working pretty nicely. And what we've just seen with the green laser is the light going through the air into the water. And we're changing the medium. We're going from air into water, and therefore we're changing the speed. And with this change in speed comes a change in direction and that change of direction is called refraction and that's what we've shown here and that's what we're going to measure now using a glass block. The next thing is collecting the data. Ah, okay, the next thing is collecting the data and uh, what we need to do here is to draw an outline of where our glass block is going to go. So there's our outline and we're going to put a normal line onto it. What is a normal? In physics, we need to use technical words sometimes. And some of these words we use in everyday language, but they change their meaning in physics. One of these words is normal. When we have a normal line, it means one line strikes the other one at right angles. If we had one line here and a second line coming in at right angles, then this line here is normal to this line. So when they strike, at right angles or 90 degrees or a perpendicular, then one line is normal to the other and we call this line the normal. This line here is called the normal and that's a quirky expression we use in physics and we measure our angles from the normal. And there's a reason we do that, but I'm not going to tell you what that reason is. You just need to know it. and we're going to put a normal line onto it, which means at right angles. So that's all set up, ready to go. Our beam of light is going to go in here and strike at the normal. We take our glass block and we just place it on top there. Okay, so our ray of light is no longer going straight through, it's refracting. It's bending towards the normal as it goes into the glass block. This is where our ray of light is entering. Here is our angle of incidence. And then our light's going to go in, so we can mark it with a, a fine dot. We should use a, a pencil or a pin. A pin will give a really good dot. Over here is where the light comes out. We can put a little mark there. And then we remove our glass block, and we can connect these lines up. This line here is our incident ray. That's the light going in there. 
and then it bends and it leaves over there. So it goes at that point. Our normal should be extended into the glass, so it should have been like that to start with, but we can make an adjustment. And there's our normal. So we've got the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction, and that's for our first angle. Now we can change that. We can put our glass block back here. We can send in our ray of light again into the same place. Everything's lined up. I'm going to use a red pen so it shows up. There's the light going in, and this time it comes out here. Oops, that's messed it up. Never mind. And this time, there's our angle of incidence, and there's our angle of refraction. And the last one, we line the whole lot up again. There's our glass block. We're going to send our ray of light in here, straight into the normal. That's where it's going in, and it's coming out there. Once again, our angle of incidence, and now our angle of refraction here. And I'm going to put an arrow on this one, so we can see which one that is. And this one, we're going to put a double arrow on it, so we can differentiate between those two red lines. Okay, now we need to measure these angles. We use our protractor, and we're going to fill in our table. So for, this is number one, this is number two, and number three. So this is our number one angle of refraction. That's two in blue, and the third one there. So on the table, we can fill out these. And our first angle is going to be, well, believe it or not, the first one is 15.5 degrees. That's our angle of incidence for number one. For number two, our angle of incidence is 36.5 degrees. For number three, our angle of incidence is 47, 47 degrees. And our angles of refraction for all of these are going to be over there. The first one is 10.5. Um, the second one is 23, and the last one is 30. So there's our data, we're going to put that into a, into a table, and then we're going to use the sine button on our calculators. We're going to take the sine of i and divide it by the sine of r, and that's going to be equal to n, and that is the refractive index. Here's our data. What we're going to do now is put all of this into a table. So we move that over there. Blank bit of paper makes a change. So one, two, three lines. We've got our three angles of incidence and our three angles of refraction. So this is 15.5 degrees, 36.5, 47 degrees. Our three angles that we measured were 10 and a half, 23, and 30. Now we're going to sign this, so we're going to get the sign. Okay, it says sin, but we pronounce it sign. The sign of R and I, in the opposite order to what I just said. And then we're going to work out the refractive index, which is N. That's the, the amount that light bends, which is going to be the sine of I divided by the sine of R. And n equals sine i over sine r is known as Snell's law. And that is telling us the refractive index. 
which tells us how much the light bends. And it has no units because it's a ratio. Okay? So that's what we're going to end up with. Snell's law, which is the refractive index, which is how much the light bends. So we've got our raw data and we process it using our calculator. So here we go. And the first one here is the sine of 15.5. And that is 0 0.267. The sine of 36.5 gives us 0 0.595. And the last one in this column is going to be the sine of 47. And there it is, 0 0.731. Okay, the sine R for these ones is the sine of 10.5 equals 0 0.182. The sine of 23 is 0 0.390. And the sine of 30, we all know, is 0 0.5. Now all we need to do is take the sine of i and divide it by the sine of r to give us the refractive index. Here we go. 0 0.267 divided by 0.182 equals 1.47. Second one, 0 0.595 divided by 0.39 equals 1.53 and the last one is going to be 1.46 so we can add those up and divide them by 3 to get an average and some of you have probably already done that but we're going to just check it with the calculator 1.47 plus 1.53 and 1.46 equals Divide it by 3 gives us 1.49. And that number is the refractive index. That's the refractive index, and that tells us how much light bends by glass. It's time for a few questions, just to see what you've learned. Time to recap. Time to see if you've actually taken any of this information in. So here we go. The first thing, when light bends, what do we call that? What's the physics term for light bending? And the answer? Refraction. Good. Okay, refraction is the first answer. The second question, when two lines meet at right angles, or they're perpendicular to each other, we say that one line is to the other. What's the missing word? One line is normal. Fantastic. One line is normal to the other. When a ray of light goes into a block, it makes an angle with the normal. What's the angle called? It's known as the angle of incidence. Fantastic. And inside, as this ray of light bends towards the normal, then this is known as the what ray? What ray do we call that inside? It's the refracted ray. Fantastic. A couple more. Uh, what letter do we use to denote the refractive index? What letter do we use for that? The letter N. Well done. And when we take the sine of I and divide it by the sine of R, that gives us a number which has no units because it's a ratio. It gives us that number and this is called the refractive index. Well done, the refractive index of the material. And this is, whose law? Who figured this out? Whose law is it? Answer, Snell's law. Well done. Okay, that's a quick recap. Hopefully you've learned all those things. And more importantly, hopefully you understand why refraction occurs. I'm a man on a mission. physics, especially when we can show refraction.